Welcome back everyone, I'm Jordan Giesegi and this is The Limiting Factor. This is the first video of the Tesla Investor Day series. My original plan was to start with a Cliff's Notes or summary of Tesla Investor Day, but the events turned out to be more polarizing than expected. So before I get into the series, I'm doing this video to address the criticisms and questions that'll inevitably bubble up in the comments, which might distract from the core content of the series. Most of the criticisms are easily debunked. Some of them offer opportunities to gain insight into investing in Tesla, while others actually do contain some merit that are worth discussing. Before we begin, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. This is the support that gives me the freedom to avoid chasing the algorithm and sponsors. As always, the links for support are in the description. The primary criticism leveled against Investor Day is that investors wanted to hear more about a new vehicle, and because Tesla didn't unveil a new vehicle, the event was a flop or some kind of bait and switch. This is common with Tesla events. People build up their own expectations, and when Tesla doesn't deliver on those expectations, they blame Tesla. But if we look at history as a guide, there's only one vehicle that Tesla didn't create a standalone event for, and that was the new Tesla Roadster, which rolled out of a Tesla semi-trailer at the semi-event. The Roadster isn't mission critical. For mission critical vehicles, Tesla always makes it clear before a vehicle unveiling that they're going to be unveiling a vehicle. That includes the Model 3 in 2016, the Semi in 2017, the Model Y in early 2019, the Cybertruck in late 2019, and the Plaid Model S in mid-2021. Many of the people who buy into the argument that Investor Day was some kind of bait and switch point to the sharp drop in Tesla's stock price the day after Investor Day as proof of that. But, as Talking Tesla shows in this image, buy the rumor, sell the news is a reliable pattern for Tesla stock. On average, before any Tesla event, there's a 1.49% run-up in the five days before the event and a 0.29% drop the day after the event. Some might point to the fact that Tesla announced Investor Day on the 2nd of January, and there's been a run-up in the price since then. Therefore, the turnaround in the stock price is proof it was a disappointment. But if we pan out further, we can see Tesla stock price is in a downtrend anyways, which is true of most stocks in the current macroeconomic environment. The lesson here is that stock charts and stock price movements are Rorschach tests. You can read into them whatever you like. So, for most people, unless you're a great technical analyst and trader, it's best to just focus on the fundamentals. Ultimately, as Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing, said, quote, In the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it's a weighing machine. End quote. Moving along, some people are frustrated with the criticism from institutional investors and Wall Street analysts that showed up in the media. To keep things simple, even though it may be unfair, I'm going to lump together institutional investors and Wall Street analysts and just call them Wall Street or analysts. Overall, based on the conversations I've had with people who went to the event, most analysts found the event useful. However, there's always at least one talking head willing to criticize Tesla, and so that's what the media focused on. If the event was actually as bad as some were saying, we'd expect lower price targets from analysts. Instead, if anything, the overall response was higher price targets, which means the negative media headlines are just clickbait. However, if analysts found the event useful, why didn't we see more price target increases? Let's take a closer look at how Wall Street viewed the event, what they value, and what it would take to see sweeping price target increases. We'll use demand as an example. What Tesla told us at Investor Day is exactly what I said in my last quarterly earnings call video. Demand is dependent on both how many people want a product and its price. If the desire for a product is high, as price decreases linearly, demand grows exponentially. At Investor Day, Tesla also walked us through the details of how they'll reduce vehicle production costs by 50% with the next generation platform. That will of course generate enormous demand. As Farzad pointed out on his channel, if you extrapolate from Tesla's presentation on Investor Day, they're expecting to sell 10 million units per year of their compact vehicle, which is over five times what they're currently producing from all models. What did Wall Street have to say about that? Gary Black is a managing partner at the Future Fund. 
In a panel discussion on the Tesla Owners Silicon Valley YouTube channel, he said most analysts are sold on the idea that Tesla can reduce vehicle costs by 50%. But he also said that Tesla didn't address the demand side of the equation. That cooked the brains of a lot of Tesla investors on the retail side because it's clear that if costs drops linearly, demand increases exponentially. However, in the eyes of Wall Street, 10 million units per year is too hypothetical and too much of a stretch. That's because in terms of absolute units and relative to the market, 10 million vehicles is nearly 10 times the global vehicle sales of the Toyota Corolla in 2022 and would make up a whopping 15% of the 66 million total vehicles sold worldwide. That is, what Tesla is proposing is unprecedented, so analysts aren't willing to put those demand figures in their models because it would put their reputation on the line. In their view, there has to be some precedent, or they need to see it to believe it. This is part of the reason why Wall Street analysts tend to chase Tesla's valuation. What good is a price target if it's basically telling you what the stock price was one month or more in the past? However, as retail shareholders, that's actually good for us because we can get ahead of the ball. While Tesla stock price has cratered in the last six months, the basic story and fundamentals are the same for a long-term investor, and it's been a chance to accumulate. So when will we see Wall Street start massively increasing their price targets? It'll vary by the analyst, but outside of outperforming and quarterly earnings, it'll be when they get proof of execution or progress. For example, when Cybertruck production and deliveries begin, when large volumes of megapacks from Lathrop start showing up in the quarterly report with high margins, when the compact Tesla is unveiled with pricing details, or when Giga Mexico breaks ground and or production begins. When these events happen, so long as the macroeconomic sentiment is cooperating, the price targets will rip upwards, chasing the stock price. On that note, coming back to the main point, just because we didn't see a large wave of price target increases after Investor Day doesn't mean that Wall Street didn't find Investor Day useful. They did. It provided them with a better understanding of what Tesla's working on and their path to a 50% cost reduction. This preps Wall Street for future price target increases. As Gary Black said, it's now clear that Tesla can make a vehicle at half the cost. So when Tesla starts producing, for example, a $25,000 compact vehicle, Wall Street will have an understanding of the cost structure and will therefore have less hesitation when increasing their price targets. If Tesla launched a $25,000 car without explaining how they managed to cut production cost in half, I suspect there would have been doubt among analysts about whether that was possible. Now, they're convinced about Tesla's vertical integration strategy, and they're ready to increase their price targets when they get more detail. For Tesla, that's a good position to be in. As a final note, as I said earlier, what I focused on here was on how Wall Street views demand. I could go on with other examples such as autonomous vehicles, energy storage, and Tesla's Optimus robot, but the story would be the same. Wall Street has its own culture that's not well suited to assessing disruptive technologies because they reason by analogy. Reasoning by analogy means that they look for examples in the market to benchmark or compare against, but with disruptive technology, that doesn't work because there are no benchmarks and no comparables. The next criticism of Investor Day was that it was disjointed. I think there's some merit to that criticism. There were three reasons why Investor Day may have come off as disjointed. The first reason was that it was such a long presentation that it was easy to get lost in the sauce. The second reason was that although each part of Investor Day was excellent, it took some mental gymnastics to keep up. Part 1 was the Master Plan Part 3 keynote about what it takes to convert the Earth to sustainable energy generation and use, the macro level. Part 2 was about how each function within Tesla is contributing to that global need, the micro level. Part 3 summarized what the macro and micro mean for the company as a whole. That is, the presentation jumped from a global strategic level to a granular technical level, then to how those technical innovations affect Tesla's margins. Following that complex narrative thread through three and a half hours and well over a hundred detailed slides certainly left some people behind along the way. For those people that did happen to, I'll do my best in the next video to weave Tesla's presentation into a more cohesive and tighter package. The third reason it came off disjointed requires a bit of perspective. 
Part of the reason why Tesla held Investor Day was to counter the narrative that if Elon is distracted with things like Twitter, then Tesla suffers for it. So, Tesla wanted to show their depth of talent across a broad range of business functions. Most of the people on stage at Investor Day have been with Tesla for over 10 years and are some of the best people in the world at what they do. The subtext being that they have a deep bench, and although Elon is important to the company, even if he's not there, things are well managed and cranking along. However, the fact that there were so many topics and speakers was inevitably going to create a meandering narrative thread. But I think that was also partially intentional. Besides showing that Tesla can run without Elon, it doubled as an open house to get to know some of the other personalities within Tesla. That'll become more important in the future when Elon eventually names a successor. On that note, one criticism of Investor Day was that some people simply thought that the subject matter wasn't interesting, useful, or it was poorly presented. In my view, there were two reasons for that. First, some of the information was somewhat redundant from other presentations, so it's a fair criticism. Regardless, maybe 15 minutes or less than 15% of the presentation was actually redundant. So, when people make out the event to be mostly redundant, that's incorrect to say the least. Second, given that such a broad range of topics were covered, with such a range of different speakers, every topic area and presenter wasn't going to please everybody. We all have different interests. As for the speakers themselves, they were chosen because they were knowledgeable and accountable. For an investor event, that's who you want answering questions. Tesla wasn't looking to put a sales or marketing expert on stage to dazzle people, but rather, as I said a moment ago, it was an opportunity to put their talented team on display. Finally, the most valid criticism of the presentation from my perspective was that there was a gap in the information. Tesla talked a lot about their supply chain, including their lithium refinery in Corpus Christi and the cathode plant in Austin, Texas, but there was very little discussion about the actual sourcing of raw materials. There could be good reasons for that, but either way, in future videos, I'll lay out the materials challenge, explain what it takes to bring a mine online, why forecasts from companies like Benchmark Minerals Intelligence and Bloomberg New Energy Finance tend to be correct over time, and what options Tesla has to maximize their material supply. In summary, most of the negativity after Investor Day was either due to people who built up their own expectations and blamed Tesla when Tesla didn't meet those expectations, or, in other cases, it was outright clickbait by the media. As some outlets correctly reported, Investor Day did in fact impress Wall Street. Wall Street just wanted details to update their price targets. Over time, Tesla will provide those details, and more importantly, execute on what they presented. Furthermore, Investor Day also allowed Tesla to show off their deep bench of talent and address fears that the company is a one-man show. As for the people pointing to the stock price as an indicator, they either aren't aware of the typical pump and dump cycle, they haven't been in the market long enough to see a protracted downturn, or they haven't noticed that there's been no major changes to price targets. Finally, there were some valid criticisms, namely that there was redundant information despite that being a minority of the presentation, and that Tesla once again skirted talking about how they'll obtain the millions of tons of lithium required for their long-term plans. Of course, as I said a moment ago, stay tuned, because as part of my Investor Day series, I'll be taking a deep look at Tesla's material supply chain. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon with the link at the end of the video, or as a YouTube member. You can find the details in the description. A special thanks to Eric Nary and Larry Fritzland for your generous support of the channel, my YouTube members, and all the other patrons listed in the credits. I appreciate all of your support, and thanks for tuning in.